This is the Audi RS Q3 Sportback. Basically, Audi has taken the Audi RS3 hot hatch, pumped it up to turn it into an SUV, then gone, oh, no, it doesn't look sporty enough. Let's squash the roof slightly to make it a bit more racy. Are you confused? Well, I think how the poor car feels, you know, it doesn't know what it is, does it? It's gonna have to undergo years of therapy to get over all this. Let's start off this review by talking about the main reason to get excited about this car, and it's the engine under the bonnet. So you've got a 2.5 litre, five cylinder turbo, and it produces 400 horsepower and 480 newton meters of torque. That peak torque comes in around 2000 RPM, and it pretty much stays right until the red line, so it should be a really nice drivable engine. Also, it's got red bits on the engine cover, which is somewhat pleasing to me. And it says this car will do 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds, but I'm gonna see for myself. So I've got my specialist timing gear here. I'm going to measure it from 0 to 60. I'm going to launch it. I've got the drive select in sports mode. I've got the gearbox in sports. I've got the traction control in sports mode. Everything's in sports mode, basically. And that enables you to launch it. Left foot on the brake, for the throttle. Here we go. And there we are, we have a time. And the windscreen wipers came on randomly. To celebrate. Should they be celebrating though? Oi, stop it! What's going on? Oh, should celebrate. 0 to 60 in 4.4 seconds, so 0.1 of a second quicker than it's supposed to do. Result. Being an RS model, you get upgraded brakes. So at the front, you've got 375 millimeter discs and they're perforated. At the back, you've got three 10 millimeters. Now as standard, the calipers are black, but you can pay an extra 325 pounds to have them in red. <laughs> you can even upgrade the brakes to carbon ceramics if you do lots of heavy braking on your way to and from the supermarket. Though that will cost you 4,500 pounds. Let's see how good these brakes really are then. I'm gonna use my specialist timing gear again to measure the distance it takes me to stop from 70 miles an hour. So let's do it, let's go up to 70. There we go, 70. Oh, yep, yep. Oof. Stops as well as it goes, it really does. This car took 42.3 meters to stop from 70 miles an hour, whereas the highway code reckons you'll have to take 96 meters. This stopped in half the distance that the highway code reckons. The RSQ3 Sportback gets upgraded sport suspension over the normal car. So you've got stiffer springs, you've got stiffer dampers. The suspension sits 10 millimeters low to the ground as well for an improved center of gravity. Also, you can upgrade the whole system to an adaptive setup for about a thousand pounds. So you then have a comfort mode, which slackens things off and a sports mode, which makes things firmer. This RS model has a slightly wider track than the standard car. Now the track is the distance between the wheels across an axle. Now that helps improve the cornering stability, but you might be wondering exactly how much has it been increased by? Well, about half a centimetre. Not entirely sure how much difference that's gonna make, but sounds good, doesn't it? As standard, you get a seven speed dual clutch automatic gearbox and quattro all wheel drive. Though it's not technically proper quattro like you get on the larger Audis. It's more of a front wheel drive based system called Haldex. And it's a little bit like comparing a Dyson vacuum cleaner, which would be proper quattro, to some cheap copy. It's just not as good. Just not. You get variable ratio steering as standard and it's specifically set up for this RS model to feel sporty. So it's nice and stable when you're going at high speed, but when you're doing low speed turns, you can go from center to full lock in pretty much one turn. Makes the car very agile and maneuverable. And anyone who's complaining about me doing dry steering because the car's not moving, I don't really care. If you're wondering why I'm standing like a bit of a moron, it's so I can reach the accelerator to let you hear the upgraded exhaust you get on this car. Now, if you don't think that sounds too impressive, there's two reasons. One, this car is fitted with a soft limiter, so you can't rev it out when it's stationary. Also, it's not the best exhaust you can get for it. You can pay an extra thousand pounds to get a sports exhaust to really hear that five cylinder engine. I suggest you do that if you buy this car. The Audi Drive Select system gives you two new configurable settings, RS1 and RS2. So you can set them up exactly as you want them. So the drive system, which is the gearbox, and the throttle response, the steering, the engine sound, so the noise from the exhaust, and the quattro all-wheel drive system between comfortable, normal, and sporty. Then you can use this button on the steering wheel to instantly toggle between those two modes without having to faff around with any buttons down here. The only slight downside is that it's called arse mode. Now, do you want arse mode one or arse mode two? Which is better? 
who knows? Okay, let's see if this baby SUV is any fun. I'm gonna put it into arse mode. That means everything's in its sportiest setting, apart from the steering, which I have in normal. I'm gonna put it into manual mode for the gearbox. Oh, because it's taller than an RS3, you can feel it leaning. Oh, the keys are making a rattling sound. Get them out, put them in my crotch. It's quite predictable, this. It just starts to push wide when you get a bit too carried away. Woo! <laughs> it's actually all right, this. I mean, it errs on the side of understeer, then you lift off and the nose gradually tightens. But it can get round a twisty road in a hurry. But really, that's not what this car's about. If you really want that hardcore on the edge handling fun, you're gonna go for a normal hot hatch. And if you want the best hot hatch, then you want the Mercedes A45 SAMG. In fact, if you click on the pop-out banner just up there in the top right hand corner of the screen, you can watch my video review of that car. So if you just want something that you sit up high in, delivers stonking straight line performance and can go around corners pretty blooming quickly, it will definitely do the job. The RSQ3 Sportback starts from just under £54,000 and even though it's pretty much brand new, you can save an average of 800 quid off one through car. Wow. Now it's quite an expensive car, but you do get a lot of upgrades such as that engine and all the chassis stuff, but there's some other upgrades as well. Here at the front, you get some styling upgrades in the form of a completely new front bumper with quite a lot of grills going on and it looks like the grills have been designed by a consortium of four different people with different personality types. So the person who designed this main central part of the grill is obviously an extrovert because you've got these big honeycomb sections. The one who designed the grill in between the Audi badge was clearly an introvert because they're tiny little shy honeycomb grills in there. Whereas the person who designed this part is, is quite normal, quite balanced, they're medium sized. And the person that designed this bit here is a complete and utter liar because that's fake. Down the side, the upgrades include slightly wider wheel arches, 20 inch alloys as standard, though you can get 21s, which is what this car has. Then you get satin here and chrome here, though high spec cars can have that in black and that in black as well. Obviously being the Sportback version of the Q3, you have a slightly squashed, more sporty looking rear end than the standard Q3. And this RS version does add obviously RS badging and a redesigned rear bumper with this satin strip in there and a diffuser. <laughs> it's not diffusing anything, it's just there for show. And of course, the obligatory oval tailpipes there that you get on RS models. Though inside, as I'll demonstrate now with my slightly scary looking piece of scaffolding, there are two actual exhaust pipes which are quite wide. Look, this fits in there. Ah. Oh, I think I've got it stuck. Oh, <laughs> don't worry, I haven't scratched the car with this, honestly. Anyway, I'm off to start a riot. Here on the inside, you get some styling upgrades, including a flat-bottomed RS Sport steering wheel. You also get RS Sport seats with a honeycomb pattern, and they're made out of Nappa leather, so it's nice and soft. The only thing is, though, I don't think they look that great, and in terms of supportiveness, they're only average for sport seats. That's me testing their supportiveness. Can you see me rattling around in the... Anyway, you also get Alcantara here and here and different coloured trim inlays here, specific to RS models. You can even get it in carbon fibre. So not that much different. Oh, I have forgotten something before I say that. You get RS Q3 sills as well, which is nice. There is something else. What is it? I've forgotten. What is it? Oh, I know. You get a red surround for the starter button. Oh, yeah. Makes all the difference. Here in the back, you also get some sporty rear seats with that honeycomb pattern, which is nice. What's not so nice is the problem that you get with the normal Q3 Sport back, and that is the fact that headroom just isn't as good as the normal Q3 due to that sloping roof line. You can slide the rear seats like that. I don't know why you'd slide them forward, because then you're going to get no knee room, so you're just going to leave it like that. And there is an ability to alter the reclination. Is that the right word? of the seat backs, but once again, you're going to have them as far back as you can have them. It's not really the best car for rear passengers, this. The normal Q3 would be better. This RS version of the Q3 Sportback has a lot of upgrades to its boot. That's a total lie, it has no changes, because why would it? And it is a good boot anyway, 530 litres, which is quite a decent capacity. It's quite a bit bigger than the BMW X235 Eyes boot. So that's good, and it's a nice square shape, so easy to pack full. Interestingly, the Sportback's boot, despite that more rakish rear end, is the same capacity as the normal Q3s. The RS Q3 also gets a lot of standard equipment as well, such as Audi's higher-end infotainment system and digital driver's display, plus dual-zone climate control. 
If you move up to the range topping Vorsprung version, then you get three zone climate control, extended interior ambient lighting, the adaptive suspension, and the Bang & Olufsen sound system. But which version of the RSQ3 Sportback should you go for? Well, I have configured my ideal version of the car on the Cobalt configurator. And if you want to see what that is and see the savings on that car, click on the pop-out banner up there to go check it out now. Now then, it's time for the car wow five annoying things about this car. In most Audi RS cars, the gear lever is trimmed in lovely Alcantara and has an RS logo on it, which looks cool. But for some reason, they haven't been RS'd to do it here. The front sport seats are really quite wide. And that means it's going to be really difficult for someone in the back to see round them. So they're not going to get a good view out. And I'll illustrate that now to you by making myself magically disappear. The silvery trim on the front of the gear selector paddles make you think that it might be made out of aluminium. Then you feel the back of it and it's just horrible cheap plastic. That doesn't feel so sporty. You don't get tyre pressure monitoring as standard. It's a £250 option which seems odd on a car at this price and especially a performance car when you're going to want your tyres at the perfect pressure. So what happens if some moron does that to your tyres? You won't know that they've gone down. I'm a moron. The gearbox can be quite unresponsive at low speeds. Listen to this. Sounds like I'm revving in neutral, but I'm actually in drive. It's just not responding. There we go. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. You get bespoke RS dials, and you also have some extra RS information. I've got the lap times in there. We'll see how fast you're going around a circuit. You also have lap statistics, so you can see exactly how well you've done. And then there's acceleration measurement, where you can measure things like 0 to 100 kilometers an hour, or 0 to 60 miles an hour, quarter mile times, or eighth of a mile time. A little light under here projects Audi Sport onto the ground when you get in and out of the car. I like it. The graphic of the car on the infotainment system has been updated to have the little RS logo on it there, so you can see the red. This five-cylinder engine is really compact, so it's only 50 centimetres in length. Also, it's 26 kilos lighter than the old five-cylinder unit in the previous RSQ3. But let's have a look under here. Does that look good? No. I'll leave the plastic cover on, I think. It's nicer. One of the best things about this car is the noise it makes. And that's down to the fact it's got five cylinders and the firing order of the cylinders in particular. Because what you have is it firing first, then second cylinder, then fourth, then fifth cylinder, and then third cylinder. And what's happening is you're essentially firing a cylinder close to the next cylinder, but then the next cylinder is quite far away. And it gives it this interesting warble sound. Anyone who buys a performance SUV spends most of their time just driving it like a normal SUV. So let's see how this copes for day-to-day -day driving with the gearbox in automatic. I'm going to put the drive mode into comfort, put the stability control all the way on and just cruise around. Now one thing I'm noticing is the firm suspension. I am feeling the bumps quite a bit. There's a little bit of a shimmy and a shake. It really isn't terrible at all, but you can get this car with optional adaptive suspension and I would probably pay the extra for it because that has a comfort mode. So when you're just driving day to day, having that setting and it's nice and soft and composed, this always feels a little bit on edge, you know, a little bit like, oh, I'm a sports car really. It will be more relaxing to drive with that adaptive suspension. The rest of it, in terms of noise, getting quite a bit of tire noise. It's not terrible, you know, it's an Audi, so it's well insulated, but a bit more than in the standard car because you've got bigger wheels and bigger tyres. The gearbox, it can be a bit hesitant around town, this auto, but when you're going at slightly quicker speeds, like now, so I'm just doing 50, if I need to suddenly put my foot down, it will kick down fine. Look at that, there we go, off we go. When you're in manual mode, here we go. It changes gears, quickly lock, press, change, quick, no delay. You can live with this every day. And that's the beauty of it, really. Oh, I forgot the economy. Guess it's kind of all right considering the performance. You don't get this kind of speed for free. Oh no. So then what's my final verdict on the Audi RS Q3 Sportback? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well I reckon you should consider the RS Q3 Sportback. It's got a fabulous engine and it does look kind of cool. It's just that it's not as fun to drive as a normal hot hatch and it's not as practical as a normal performance SUV. It's a sort of confused in-betweener. 
Do you agree with my verdict? Let me know in the comments section. Also, please subscribe to this channel for more videos. And if you click on the deals box to the right, you can see how much you can save on a new car at CarWow. Or click on the video windows below to watch another of my videos.